Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The University of Vermont is announcing new scholarships for the fastest growing segment of our modern society, computing. UVM's Computer Science Department was recently awarded a $650,000 grant from the National Science Foundation. The university will use the money to provide student scholarships. The scholarships will average more than $8,000 a year and they'll be awarded to academically talented students with financial need. To find out more, I'm joined this afternoon by Dr. Maggie Epstein. Maggie is the chair of the UVM Depart Computer Science Department. It's great to have you with us. Thanks, Judy. Nice to be here. Um, let me start by talking a little bit about the intent of this award from the National Science Foundation and how that money is going to be used. So, as you said, it's going to be used to help academically talented students, and they have to have demonstrated needs. So we're really trying to make computer science education more affordable, um, and we would really like to increase the diversity of the field particularly targeting marketing to in-state females because females are very underrepresented in the field and it's a tremendous opportunity area for, for them but for everyone. And so why does the National Science Foundation think it's important to provide support for this kind of education? Um, well, you've probably heard a bit about STEM education, right. STEM being science, technology, engineering, and math, and computer science is part of that and that there's um, the supply of graduates is not meeting the demand. In reality, most of that unmet demand is in computing. So if we look at slide one here, um, on the bar graph, mm -hmm. you can see th that um, that's the actual number of computer science majors on the y-axis, or the number of, of graduates on the y-axis. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the number of jobs mm -hmm. on the y-axis. And the leftmost two bars are for computer science. Wow. And then moving across to the right, we have math and stat, engineering, life sciences, physical sciences, and social sciences. The blue is the uh, jobs in 2012, and the red is the projected jobs in 2022. This is all wow. Bureau of Labor Statistics um, stuff. So actually, that meant 59% of the jobs were in computing. Now, in this slide, we see that 71% of the projected new jobs over the next decade are going to be in computing. So there's really a big problem here, and we have to somehow figure out how to increase the number of computer science majors to be able to meet this demand. What is computer science? Well, you know, a lot of people think computer science has to do with building computers, but actually, as Edgar Dijkstra said, he's one of the founding fathers, computer science is no more about computers than astronomy is about telescopes. In reality... So a computer is a tool. Computer is a tool, right. And on the next slide, I kind of image what I, how I see computer science. And at the heart of this, you'll see there's problem solving. Mm -hmm. And that's really what computer science is. So and it's that's a, really what a lot of different jobs are. <laughs> Yeah, and so it, it is such a creative and versatile field, and, and moving out from the center here, there are more traditional areas of computer science like software engineering, computer architecture, databases, et cetera. But as we move out, we can see now that it just encompasses virtually every area of society, whether we're talking science, art, social computing, et cetera. And so there are the careers that are available are equally diverse. And you can be a web developer, but you can also be a scientific programmer or an engineer or somebody developing the art for uh, you know, Pandora. They, they basically use computer algorithms to grow all the forests and everything there. And so it's uh, very broad, and you can work anything from an entrepreneur to working in a small business to working for big companies like Google. So it sort of fits all types. Now, it's funny, a lot of schools, most schools these days have computers, and kids use computers, but that's not what computer science is about. It's about getting kind of the word out about the different ways to use a computer. Well, I would say it's, computer science is about creative problem solving, so it's extremely rewarding because when you sit down and you have a problem and you develop an algorithm and you figure out what do I need as inputs, what do I need as outputs, and how do I make that happen? And it works, it is just so fun. So it's a very creative and challenging area. Um, and it's also lucrative. So on the next slide, I just pulled some data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and we can see that, for example, for software developers, 
in 2012, the median pay was over $93,000. That's with a bachelor's degree and no prior experience. Um, okay, that's that's a huge number because when you look at what it costs to go to college, yeah, absolutely, you, know, you mm -hmm, need mm -hmm. to be able to get into a career where you can pay those bills off. Yes, and and this is not a starting salary. And I well, it might be in some parts of the country. It depends on where you're at and how right. many years you've been in the job. But it's definitely a good solid field. So given how broad the field is, how is UVM computer science curriculum structured to prepare students for all these different areas? Yeah, I mean, you can't cover everything in one degree, but we actually have three different degree programs. We have our Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, which is the most technical, the most math science and computer science. Mm -hmm. But we also, at the other end of the spectrum, have a Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science, which has less computer science, but is flexible enough that students can easily double major in something like biology or music or art or psychology or, or whatever they're interested in. Um, and then we also have a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Information Systems, which is a serious amount of computer science, but also accompanied with business. So we sort of have designed the curriculum to be flexible so students can pick where their interests are. Are most students who are coming out of high school know this exists? No. <laughs> and that's a big part of the problem. Um, but I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, yeah. right, now talk about internships. Um, internships we see as a great complement to formal education because they get experiential learning and they find out early on what parts of computer science they are or aren't interested in. Mm -hmm. But also a lot of employers now are trying to, because there's such a dearth of computer scientists, they're trying to snag interns early <laughs> so they can essentially train them on the job and then hire them when they get out of there. Right. So it's not to say you can't get a job without an internship because there are so many opportunities, but you're more likely to get a better job and maybe something you like and where you've already had some experience. So this all makes computer science sound like a tremendous field to go into. Are students flocking? You know, um, in 2011, I think it was less than 3% of U.S. degrees were in computer science, but they are finally starting to increase, and this graph shows the, uh, the number of computer science majors on average in U.S. departments of computer science, and so you can see it is going up. And in fact, on the next slide, show at UVM computer science, on the left here we have the number of computer science majors, and on the right the number of minors. We're actually growing even faster. Um, down on the bottom in the red line mm -hmm. is the, the number of women. Ooh. Now I'm actually plotting the raw number of women, but I'm showing the percentages, and you can see in 2010, or yeah, it was down at 10%, mm -hmm. and by 2013 we were up to 17%, which is close to the national average, but that's still pathetically low. Why is that? Um, it's for a lot of reasons, but I think mostly misconceptions about computing and also the fact that students are not exposed to computer science early on and, and women are don't see that as part of their role because they don't really understand what it is. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? and if you don't, I mean, knowing how to use a computer doesn't mean that you're a computer scientist. Right, right. Um, so there is one more slide I just mm -hmm. wanted to show quickly, sure. which is comparing the growth at UVM to the national average. So okay. the green at the bottom, this is relative increase, that's the national average. The blue is the UVM majors and the red is the UVM minors. So we've actually been growing even faster than the national average. So we talked about some scholarships, but what are some of the things that UVM is doing to help increase the enrollment in computer science? Um, well, let me just fl quickly flick to the next slide mm -hmm. to address one of the problems, which is the one after that. Um, this shows the percent of females, and the blue line here is the bachelor's degrees awarded to females. So okay. as you can see, the national average has been dropping and is hmm. right around 70%. So m many of our efforts are directed at increasing um, women. Um, if you just flip to the next slide, you'll see that a big part of the problem, as I said, is that high school students just don't have computer science on their radar. This graph shows the number of students that have taken AP tests. On the top, there's calculus and then biology, et cetera. And everything's been increasing, except computer science, which is that yellow line on the bottom, which is flat. And yeah. we know that students that take AP computer science are eight times more likely to major in computer science. But in 2011, only 36% of the U.S. schools even offered APCS, and as you can see with the, the pie chart, only 19% of the people that took it were females. So we have a problem with, with education. So we've been doing a number of things to try and get the word out. We've created a no, new brochure. I mm -hmm. have a couple of slides of that. Um, so if you flip to the next slide, this is the front, of the, front and back of the brochure, again right. showing some of the demand. 
And then if you go to the inside of the brochure on the next slide, just trying to wake people up to the fact that it is so broad and you don't have to be a nerd to want to be in computer science. You know, if you're interested in global warming or medical imaging or history or whatever, right. there, there's a the, role for that. The key word there is future. Yeah. You know, thinking about the future. What's the future going to look like? And just understanding the breadth. Mm -hmm. um, so you asked what some of the things that we're doing are. One of the things we've started that's really exciting is a new computer science fair. Mm -hmm. And we had our first fair last December. This is sponsored by local and non-local businesses. Here are some of the sponsors of our first CS fair. And we have some pictures here just showing uh, some of the images of the fair. And this was tremendous. We had 93 six projects, I think, representing 160 students and wow. all these employers that were networking with the students and they're showing off their projects. And we had prizes. The grand prize was $1,000, but all the way on down to random drawings. So it really incentivized students to come. And so um, we're so talking about I, I just want to say there are a bunch of other things we've okay. been doing. So the fair is one thing. We also have a new freshman uh, computer science seminar, which is designed to bring all the computer science majors together into one classroom so they can get to know each other. And then I have guest lectures from all of the computer science faculty. So many students get into computer science, and of course they start with computer programming, and they don't have a sense of the breadth of computer science. Right. So we have the faculty come in and talk, give a, a, a lecture about a higher level topic to introduce students students to what's in the curriculum, to meet the faculty, and to get a sense of what the breadth of computer science is. And we're also working now to, uh, we, we have a fabulous student group, CS Crew, we're working to develop a women's section of that, and we're also working to try and uh, get money to send women to the Grace Hopper Conference. Um, there's one slide just showing that, which is a, a, Grace Hopper was a famous female computer scientist, and it's a tremendous opportunity for female computer scientists to see that there's a ton of other females out there mm -hmm. of, of all ranges and, and they're really fun. So computer science enrollments have had a history of boom and bust cycles. Do you think the current surge in enrollment is temporary? Do you think this is something we can build on? Yeah. Um, so there is a slide showing some of this cyclicity. And the green line or the blue line there are the bachelor's degrees. Mm -hmm. But what's typically happened is the first in, in the 70s, that's when microcomputers were first developed. So mm -hmm. they went from being something that only the government had to something that people could have in their houses. And that was the first spike. People got very interested. But then they're sort of like, well, what do we do with them now? And programs like Excel were created and people could do a lot on computers just as a user without knowing how to program them or, or right. solve the problems. Um, and so computer science enrollments dropped off again. But then the web browsers came around in the 90s, and then that sort of sparked the whole internet boom, and there was another spike. But then again, people sort of went over overboard with it, and we had the dot-com bust, and, and things came back down again. But uh, the latest thing is, of course, with the iPhone, and the fact mm -hmm. that now computing is just ubiquitous. And so every little app that you have, there had to be a computer scientist that developed that. Um, all the wireless sensors everywhere, there's massive data coming in. I'm sure you've heard the phrase big data. And companies are just clamoring for people to figure out how to analyze this data. And computer scientists for years have been studying how to organize data and be able to access it in ways that are efficient. But this whole big data thing has just taken it to another level. And we really need to figure out new creative ways of handling these massive amounts of data. So I really can't see that computers are going to go away. I right. mean, if you think about it, computers are just in every aspect of our lives. And so I think this trend is just going to keep going. And even if you think of that graph, the trend is still up, even with the ups and downs. So even if there is some cyclicity to it, it's just going to keep growing. And you can talk to any business person, and they will tell you that now they're trying to figure out how to use this technology oh, yes. to reach more customers and to yeah. be ahead of that curve, or at least on the wave. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we I get more calls for internships than we have students. I get more calls for people saying, we need your graduates. And I mean, that's great, but we need help getting more students in to be able to do that. You know, you look at the different apps that are on iPhones, for mm -hmm. instance, and it's almost like if you could think it up, it can be. Yeah. And you're that's, trying to connect the dots. That's the fun, creative part of it. We actually have a new course in app development run by one of our professors, Chris Skalka. 
and uh, the students actually work on teams to develop apps for real clients across campus and it's a fabulous opportunity to get the experience but also to develop a real product that's going to be in use and that's very exciting for the students. Where can high school students and parents go to find out more information about this? Well our website is a good place to go uh, www.cs.uvm.edu I have a slide showing that um, and there are also a tremendous number of opportunities on the web uh, we have some links to them on the website so and I welcome people to contact me directly too if you're interested in sponsoring the CS Fair or finding out more about the scholarships or more about our computer science majors or just more about the field in general. It's exciting. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for joining right. us. Thanks. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.